Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video for you. Today I'm going to walk you through how I landed my first independent contracting gig as a data scientist. At the end, I'll give you some tips on how you can land projects like this for yourself. If you enjoy this video, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more content similar to this, please subscribe and turn on notifications to see when I post my next weekly video. You can offer your data science services plenty of places online like Upwork and Fiverr, but it can be really hard to get your first client anywhere. There are a couple steps that you need to take to be credible in the eyes of businesses that you'd be working for. In my personal journey, I didn't use a web platform. I landed my first client through good old fashioned networking. The engagement started something like this. First, I reached out via LinkedIn. The company was in the sports analytics space where I've done previous work. So I reached out with just a friendly request to learn more. In the message, I mentioned where I found out about the company, talked about how I could potentially add value. And I also noted that I was just generally interested in what they were doing. There was no sales component, just a friendly introduction that could start a larger dialogue. To be fair, I thought contracting might be an option, but I didn't go in with this front of mind. I really want to highlight that they wouldn't have been interested in even talking with me if I hadn't previously done work in sports. One of the most important things here is that you have some sort of track record. You should emphasize this in any of the communications that you have with a potential client. My background experience was interesting enough to be able to convince the CEO to grab some drinks with me after work one day. He had an extremely interesting story as well. and. He actually started this company when he was in college and never looked back. He's also quite a few years younger than me and I'm really impressed he was able to do so much in such a short period of time. During our drinks, we focused more on learning about each other's experiences than we focused on anything work related. In most contracting or jobs in general, you care just as much about the personality of the individual as the work that they can do. Things like, does this person view success in the same way I do? Or does this person seem easy to work with and receptive to feedback? These are all relevant questions that you want to answer for the employer. Eventually, we did end up talking about some of the work that I've done in the past. I was able to tell some interesting findings from my, from my golf experience, and he was able to explain how the company was able to come so far, again, in this short period of time. Naturally, when I talk about my work, it's interesting to hear about how other companies are applying analytics to their own platform, because that's what I do in my day job. This natural segue led us into a conversation about how the company is currently leveraging analytics and how they'd also like to use them in the future. As a conversation progresses in the business direction, it's important to focus on the potential client's pain points. Their vision of the future and the value that they're hoping to create from leveraging analytics is also important. The clearer you make the case for analytics, the better. In this scenario, I was able to give my take on some of the opportunities that I saw available to him. I also talked about the feasibility of some of the things that he had planned. This is one way that you can demonstrate some free value right away. You show your understanding of the nature of the potential projects and you give them honest estimates of how long you think these projects would take and if they could actually even work. Before we left the dinner, I made sure we had some ways to keep the conversation going. I told them I'd be happy to look at their data to see how much overhead would be needed to actually build a potential project. After we went our separate ways, I waited a while. He ended up actually sending over the sample of their data, which is a really good sign. He also sent over some information on the tools they use, the database structures that, that they had in place. With this, I was able to create a very clear outline of a project. This outline had timelines, it had resource expectations, and a clear outcome for the project. This again is a free service that I'm providing. Even if I don't do the work, the company would be able to use this guideline to build this internally. And that's totally okay. If there's anything that they didn't know during that process, I'm pretty sure I'd be the first person that they would reach out to. After waiting a few more weeks, I went into the office to have another discussion. This one was a little more businessy and focused on the value that I could provide, as well as the rates that I have and the expectations of a potential project work. Setting very clear expectations, again, I can't highlight enough, is extremely important in this work. We started a trial period based off of a retainer. 
I charge a certain hourly rate for about 200 hours. Since this was my first contract, I was happy to give them a large discount on my normal rate, which would be taken from my day job. I think some concession here is really important. Since I didn't have any true contract record to speak of, they're taking on slightly more risk to use me. In return, I can compensate that risk with a slightly lower rate. Even if you feel like you're being underpaid, you make up for this with the experience that you gain and the track record that you accumulate here. Getting this first client allows me to get a second client with far more ease, and I can charge a more fair rate to that second client because that risk of not having a track record is now mitigated. So now that you know my story, what are some of the major takeaways? I think the first thing I'd like to focus on is this whole process. As you can see, it's kind of a courting process. It's a lot of small interactions, a lot of small touch point, a lot of places where I'm just providing very incremental value. I think that that's how these engagements go. They're not just one conversation and you're done. It's a long drawn out process where you're getting to know each other. I would say it's almost like, like dating or something like that. For anyone that's looking to get into this, this isn't a short one and done, I'm gonna get this quickly. It's something that you have to build and grow and cultivate over time. The way that you can have success with multiple of these is if you start the courting processes on multiple of these at the same time. You start growing these relationships, a lot of them, eventually some of them will bear fruit. To be fair, you can invest a lot of time in a lot of these and some of them might never work out. All of them might never work out. So there is some risk on your end involved as well. When you're treating these things like a courtship, I have a couple of pieces of advice that I think could help you. So the first is that you just need to connect and meet people. If you meet enough people in business, opportunities will start to reveal themselves, especially if you're always thinking about the value you can provide to other people. The second thing you need to do is just build a track record. You can do this by pursuing personal projects, performing research, or even through free work. Specialization can also really help you here. The third thing is that you should understand the other person's view of analytics. What are their pain points? What would they hope to achieve? Understand if this is something that you can actually help with. The next thing you should do, and this is only if you're asked, but give advice and low levels of work freely. If they view you like an advisor, they're far more likely to go with you if an opportunity presents itself in the future. Often in these engagements, the time just isn't right right now, but you'll get a call in two, three months saying that they're ready to go forward with your project. This whole process, again, I can't stress this enough, is a long game. The last thing you should do is make sure that you follow up and make it as easy as possible for them to hire you. If you plan the whole project, understand their team and the systems that they use, all they really have to do is sign the check. This is actually a pretty low effort act for them. So that's really the story of my first contract job. It was with a company in Chicago called Zcruit. They were absolutely awesome. They make an incredible product. And you can learn more about the nature of what that work was like in the video I've linked above and below. I gave a talk at Northwestern where I went into some of the projects there. So I think you might enjoy that. I hope that this was useful to you. It was informative and that it might actually help you land your first contract role. As usual, thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey.